going to talk about the tithe, the kingdom, and the tax. Hallelujah. The kingdom and the tax. And we're going to look, we're going to take our text from Luke 11, verse 42 to 42. 40 says, Ye fools. Ye fools. The mirror translation says, Ye stupid people. You fools, did not, did not he that made that which is without make of that which is within also? Hallelujah. Now let's let's go forward. Let's go upwards to to thirty nine, or rather, let's go to thirty eight. And when the Pharisees saw it. And when the Pharisee saw it, he was marvel that he had not first washed, washed before dinner. <laughs> they invited Jesus to the house. They invited Jesus to the house. And Jesus did not wash his hands. Of course, you know he went with his disciples. So they, none of them washed their hands. None of them did their water abbreviation or whatever it's called. You know, they'll first of all wash their hands, they'll wash their nose, wash their lips, wash their ears, they'll wash their feet before dinner. If you don't wash like that, you can't come to the table and begin to eat. So Jesus entered and his disciples, they went straight to the dining table without washing nothing and began to eat. So all the Pharisees paused. And they were looking at Jesus. Jesus noticed and called them foolish people. That the one that made the outside, is it not the same one that made the inside? And I told them that. You are keeping your outside clean, but your inside is full. The exact Greek word, the exact Greek word is that your inside is full with malice, hate, barbiting, anger, wickedness. Praise God. You see, that's how your inside is, that's what is in your inside. But your outside, you clean it, you polish it. So when the sun hits it, it will shine. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus called them foolish in verse 40. You fools, did not he that made that which is within make that which is without also? 41. But rather give alms of such things as you have, and behold, all things are clean unto you. Now, they accuse him of not washing hands. He's not telling them, give to people. Right? Give to people. Love people. Love people. Appreciate people. Don't frustrate people. Show them my kind of life, the kingdom life. Hallelujah. Not being religious. Now a lot of people are taking what I'm going to read next out of context. But I will show you. A lot of people took what I'm going to read next out of context, but I'll show you this. But woe unto you. Woe unto you. That means calamity of grief unto you. Exclamation of pain 
unto you Pharisees for you tithe meat and rules and all manner of herbs that means you tithe tiny things you tithe tiny things and you try to keep your books you tithe the tiny things you try to keep your books right I'm showing I'm going to show you something now you tithe tiny things you try to keep your books and you pass over judgment and love of God you tithe tiny things you try to to keep your books clean you 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 okay let, let me let me bring this back. the Pharisees at that time they received gifts right diamonds gold silver and all of all that from people they don't type that they don't type that they only type what they grow in their garden because Moses said all your crops bring your crops to the altar so that liver we have food because liver will not have time to go make farms if they go make farms they will not have time to take care of the things of the altar so bring your food for them so that they will have things in their storehouses when they are hungry right now these pharisees the reason why jesus yanked them is because they now went to make gardens in their homes and bring even the smallest things from the garden to tithe and not even tithe the things that are necessary for them to tithe so that so that the the church can help and expand and take territories hallelujah now watch this is when they take it out of context This ought you to have done and not to leave the order undone. This last clause is where the problem is. This ought you to have done. Now, yes, you have to keep your books, keep your records, right? Be nice, judge rightly, and love the people. But the order, the main thing, the main tight team, that's what, what you're supposed to do. Hallelujah. The main tight team, that's what you're supposed to do. Not to look for who did not wash his hands before eating. Praise God. Not to look at people's character. Amen. Not to look at what, how they shake their body when they are in church. But love them. Love them. Whether they are shaking their body to the right and you are shaking your body to the left, it doesn't matter. Love them. Whether they have no brush for one year, still love them. Don't even do like this. But still love them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Glory to God. It does not matter. Whatever character they have, whatever, uh, uh, um, see, sometimes their weaknesses don't count. Sometimes you, you, your love will puncture the foundation of that weakness and make them whole. Hallelujah. Sometimes we as parents don't even know our children are facing some kind of hurt. And the next thing will be, is this how your man does things? It's a, oh, I love you, come, be, be. Let me show you something. You see, he said, he said, but rather give hands 
of such things. I, I went back to 41. Rather, give hands of such things as you have. And behold, all things are clean unto you. Now, if tithe is the major, right, and you give tithe of all that you have, it makes all that you have clean. Do you understand me? Now, let me say something not religious, but it's going to be weird to a lot of people. Mamo. How many of you know what Mamo is? Mamo is the god of money. Right? That means all money is controlled by Mamo. So when you take a percentage of your tax and give to God is a sign that you are not controlled or the money you have is not controlled by mammon. That's what Jesus is saying here, that your money becomes clean. So if you do business, in the course of business, you can never tell a hundred percent truth in the course of business. You can never tell a hundred percent truth. That one percent has converted your money into mammoth money. And when you tithe, it has it has put your money under the fountain of the blood of Jesus, and that money becomes clean. No longer the hand of mammon attached to it by your mistake of life. So money is an unholy mammal. When you tie it out of your unholy mammal, it becomes holy money. No longer mammoth money. Glory to God. So those that lie in their business, no matter how small or white lie it is, and does not tie, watch their business, it starts to go down. Because mama will always take what is in it. The business will begin to go down. Now some people now taught it wrongly and said, if you don't touch, you will go to a fire. No, if you don't touch, you will not go to a fire. But your life here will be ruled by mama. And anything mama is ruling comes down, does not go up. Amen? Amen. So a world is good enough for a wise man to take. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let me show you the beauty of tithing. Are we ready? Yes. Hebrews. Hebrews chapter number 7. We'll read from 4. We we'll read from verse 4. I want to read the King James Version. We we'll read from verse 4 through to verse 10. Glory to God. Now, the first chapter of Hebrews shows. Okay, let me leave on. But it shows the superiority of the New Testament over the Old. It shows Jesus above the Lord, right? But watch this, watch this. From, what did I say again? Hebrews 7, from verse, verse 4. 4. Now consider how great this man was, unto whom, whom the picture Abraham gave the tent of the spoil. Which man? Mekis said it. Consider how great he is. That Abraham gave a 10% of what? His pearls. Did he grow his pearls? They are metals, amorphs, uh, 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 gold, silver, copper, some spices, herbs, food, things that he got when he defeated he took their spurs. 
as, as his trophy. So when he was coming, he took 10% of all that and he gave to who? Mekisedek. Mekisedek is a type of Jesus. In fact, he's actually Jesus manifested in the old. Right? Okay, let's read it. And verily they that are of the sons of Levi, who receive the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to take tax of the people according to the law. That is, that is, of their brethren, though they came out of the loins of Abraham, but he whose descent is not but he who the same is not counted for them received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promise and bless him that had the promise and without all contradiction the less is blessed by the better hallelujah without all contradiction the less is blessed by what? The better. Hallelujah. Let me just read the King James Holden. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And here men that die receive tithes. But there he received them of whom it is witness that he lives. And as I may say, and as I may so say, Levi also who received tithe, paid tithe in Abraham. For he was yet in the loins of, fa of his father when Melchizedek met him. Wow. This is awesome. Abraham, that had the promise, right? How many of us realize or know what the promise is? The promise is eternal salvation manifest in the flesh. Amen. That means we will come back into our former glory in God once we leave this life, this earth. And we are not even going to wait to leave this earth. We will begin to leave that glory in this earth. We enjoy that eternal glory in this earth and go to heaven and live in that eternal glory. That's the promise. Hallelujah. And the promise came by the birth, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Amen? Amen. So he that has that promise is great. Is great. But as great as he is, he paid tithe to someone even greater. Hallelujah. Now this is where it's going to get interesting. When, when Abraham met Melchizedek, the Bible says he gave him, that's Melchizedek, the priest now, the priest of God, gave him bread and wine. Bread and wine, communion, is a symbol of the death of Jesus. Amen. Bread and wine is a symbol of the death of Jesus. Now, as he gave him bread and wine, Abraham gave him tithes. After the bread and wine, Abraham gave him tithe. Now, I'll read the message translation of Hebrews 7, 8 to 10. Are you ready? Oh, look at it this way. We pay our tithe to the priest who died.
the Levitical priesthood are men that died. We pay our tithes to that Christian of men that died. But when Abraham paid his tithes, he did not pay his tithes to a man that died. He paid his tithes to a man that lives forever. That means tithing is a sign of the living Jesus, not a dead Jesus. Hallelujah. When you tithe, you are saying Jesus is alive. Not Jesus is there. So when you refuse to tithe, you are standing in the gutter that Jesus is dead. He did not raise or rise from the grave. Kingdom perspective. Watch. But Abraham paid tithe to a priest who the scripture says lives. Ultimately, you could even say that since Levi descended from Abraham who paid tithe to Melchizedek, when we pay tithe to the priestly tribe of Levi, they end up with Mekisedek. Mekisedek is a type of Jesus. When we pay our tithe in church to the priest, we don't pay our tithe to the, to the priest. Our tithe end up glorifying the risen Jesus who lives forever. <laughs> Hallelujah. So ladies and gentlemen, if you don't pay tithe, you are not glorifying the living Jesus. Your tithe might be in your pastor's hand, but is paid directly to the life of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me give you five minutes to let us sing. Your time is a sign, a symbol, an heavenly principle that Jesus lives. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Hallelujah. Because he lives, I can't fail. Because he lives, I'm above principalities and power. That's why he says that when you pay your tithe, the devourer cannot come. Because when Jesus is, devourers can come. When you believe that Jesus is alive in you, you are secure. You have eternal security. Your tithe is insane. I have it. I have it. I have it. I'm secure. Eternally. Your tithe is your identification mark. That Jesus is alive in you. Haha! <laughs> that because he's alive in me, I'm above all. I'm seated in heavenly places. It's a symbol. And guess what? is a heavenly kingdom principle for expansion. Jesus said to the Pharisees, the kingdom of God is amongst you. That means Jesus is the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom is the teaching of Jesus. And when you talk, is a principle that the kingdom is in you and the kingdom street is paved with gold, diamonds and ruby. How can you be poor? I rest my case. Glory to God. Stand up, church. <laughs>